Hello and welcome to a new tutorial from Grandstream Networks. Today we're going to talk about Wi-Fi roaming and how to optimize the roaming experience of wireless clients. As you might know, roaming is a wireless feature that allows wireless clients to remain connected to the same wireless network while moving across facility with multiple access points. So designing a wireless network that supports roaming involves many aspects that need to be taken into consideration. In this video, we will cover the main factors that might affect Wi-Fi roaming and how to tackle them. So as I mentioned, roaming is a technology that allows wireless clients to automatically and seamlessly switch from one access point to another within the same wireless network. And of course, the access points must belong to the same ESS. In other words, they must be members of the same SSID. An important thing to note is the process of detecting and roaming to the next access point is the responsibility of the wireless client. Therefore, some devices might roam better than others. So as the wireless client moves away from an access point, the RSSI weakens and the data rate gets lower. A wireless client that is close to the access point might have a better data rate than one that is sitting at the boundary of the BSS area. This is why it is important to make sure you have access points that are properly placed to cover the entire area with a good signal. So you might think that installing more access point is a good approach to increase coverage and bandwidth. However, this has a downside to it, which might cause a significant disruption to the Wi-Fi performance. First, deploying many access points in proximity may cause interference in the wireless medium, especially when you have access points operating in overlapping channels. Not only does it create interference, but it also increases airtime usage, which can cause Wi-Fi connection to slow down. Second, it becomes unpredictable as to which access point the client will connect. This might even cause the client to constantly jump between APs while still in the same spot. And this is not good for the Wi-Fi connection stability of the client. On the other hand, deploying less access point than what is needed can create a Wi-Fi dead zone which is basically an area with no Wi-Fi connection due to range issue. In some cases, the wireless administrator might decide to increase the radio power of the access point to cover these areas with no Wi-Fi connection. This approach might cause a problem known as a sticky client, which is a situation where um, a wireless client remains connected to an access point that is further while it is supposed to connect to the next AP that is closer. Never underestimate a sticky client problem because it can significantly degrade the performance of the entire wireless network. As I mentioned earlier, the further from the access point, the lower the data rate. And the lower the data rate, the more airtime is needed to transmit data which eventually causes other devices to wait longer for their turn to transmit their own data. Besides increasing radio power on the access point, will allow the access point to transmit packets to the client with no issues. However, the client transmission power might not be strong enough to allow its packets to reach the access point which will increase the retransmission rate. As we know in wireless communication, uh, all transmitted data needs to be acknowledged by the receiver. So when the data is not received by the access point, there is no acknowledgement and eventually the client must retransmit that same data. The optimal scenario that we need to implement is to have the access points cover all areas, but with minimal overlap between access points that operate in the same channel. One way to reduce BSS overlapping is to adjust the radio power of the access points. For instance, 
When you have a facility with multiple access points deployed in proximity, lowering the radio power is inevitable. And this can mitigate the sticky client problem. So when adjusting the radio power, you also want to make sure the access points are placed and overlapped in a way that prevents any device from leaving the minus 75 or 70 dBm range. In other words, you want the RSSI from two neighboring access points to overlap at minus 65 or 70 dBm. So now that we explained the importance of access points placement and radio power adjustment to optimize roaming, there are other features that you can enable on the GWN access points to improve the roaming experience of the wireless clients. GWN access points support voice enterprise feature, which is designed to reduce the time needed for device to roam from one GWN AP to another. It is based on the wireless standards 802.11k, R and V. This is particularly useful for delay sensitive applications such as voice and video. Before we dive into the functionality of voice enterprise, let's first explain how devices roam between APs so we can understand how voice enterprise helps in that process. The client decision to roam occurs when it moves further from the AP and the signal strength gets weaker. Most wireless devices use RSSI to decide when to roam to the next AP. In some cases, as we saw in one of the previous slides, the signal strength might be acceptable, but the transmission failure rate is high because the, the transmitted frame by the client is too weak to be received by the access point, which causes the client to retry transmitting the same frame multiple times. In such a case, the client might decide to start probing an AP with a better connection. SNR or signal to noise ratio is another factor used by the device algorithm to decide when to roam. So the roaming decision is dependent on the client driver and the built-in algorithm it uses for roaming. So when the client finally decides to roam, it sends out a probe request to identify the next AP and based on the probe responses that it receives from an AP or uh, multiple APs, it then selects which access point to roam to. And this is followed by the authentication and association messages exchange. So the process of disconnecting from an existing AP before connecting to the next AP results in a period of time where the client has no Wi-Fi access. And this is where voice enterprise feature comes in handy. This feature is built on the three standards 802.11k, R and V. When you enable voice enterprise on the GWN access points, you improve the Wi-Fi experience of mobile clients by reducing the time needed for roaming. First, let's take a look at 802.11k. The main purpose of this standard is to help mobile clients to learn about the neighboring access point. Basically, the client sends a neighbor report request to the existing AP and the latter collects information about the APs in the same ESS and sends it to the client as the neighbor report response. A useful piece of information provided in that response is the list of neighboring APs and the channels they are on, which reduces the need for the mobile client to scan all channels. In other words, 802.11k reduces the time required for roaming by allowing the mobile client to anticipate which AP it should roam to and which channel it should probe. The next standard that is part of Voice Enterprise is 802.11r, which is used to help mobile clients authenticate more quickly. So when enabled access points will sync PMK or pairwise master key for the wireless client, so when it decides to roam to the next AP, it doesn't need to perform the complete authentication process, which eventually reduces the time needed for roaming. The third standard is 802.11v, which also makes wireless clients more aware of their wireless network. 
When enabled, the access points and the wireless clients use BSS transition messages exchange to learn about the neighboring AP's load. This is a useful feature for load balancing. For instance, a wireless client might use the load information of neighboring APs to decide which access point has less load to roam to. An important thing to keep in mind is that Voice Enterprise works only with wireless devices that support these standards. So if your device doesn't support these standards, Voice Enterprise will not take effect during the wireless connection of the client. To demonstrate where and how to configure the settings related to roaming, I will log into my GWN.cloud account and show you some settings that you need to adjust to optimize your roaming. So now I'm logged into my GWN.cloud account and the access points are available under access points. Then we're going to go to the configuration and then we can pick one of the access points. So during the presentation, we talked about adjusting radio power of the access point. So if you go to the configuration access point, the radio power adjustment is available for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So it is important to keep in mind that the coverage range of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are different. 2.4 gigahertz can cover a longer range than 5 gigahertz. So when you have multiple access points, as I mentioned during the presentation deployed in close proximity, uh, it is inevitable to come here and change those uh, parameters from the system parameters, depending on where each access point is located. So here when it says use radio settings, the radio settings are available and the radio settings right here. And by default, they are using high. So if you need to adjust that one to low and the radio power for five, you can keep it, for example, to medium because uh, 2.4 travels longer than five gigahertz. So we want to adjust them in a way that when we reach the boundary of the BSS, we get the same value like minus 65 or minus dBm. So for this case, I'm going to set the 2.4 to low and the five gigahertz to medium. Another setting that I did not mention during the presentation, which is band steering. Band steering uh, is good for stationary uh, wireless clients. For mobile devices, sometimes it might cause the, the wireless clients to take longer to roam. And the reason it does this because during the roaming process, the clients, they might scan uh, for example, 2.4 gigahertz while the access point is set to use 5 gigahertz priority. One thing to do when you want to use band steering with mobile devices is if you decide to use 5 gigahertz in priority for band steering, uh, you can go to the wireless client and configure them to only use 5 gigahertz. So when they try to connect to the access point, they will only use 5 gigahertz, which is used as a priority. So these are just a few settings that you can enable at the access point configuration page. Uh, next, we go to the SSID, and this is where we uh, enable voice enterprise. So when you create your own SSID and you decide whether to use a pre-shared key or a root one X, which is a radius server, uh, the voice enterprise feature is available under advanced settings. And once you select this option, as you can see, the three of them are selected. You can also choose one without the other. So in case you want to just uh, enable 802.11r to uh, speed up the authentication process, you can just enable R. In case you just want to use 802.11k so that the wireless clients get information about the neighboring access points and the channels they are using, you can just set 80211 uh, okay. So again, it's up to the wireless administrator to decide which ones to use. Remember, these settings, they only work with wireless devices that support these three standards. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.